Praise the Lord, everyone. We welcome you today to the Reaching Out program, and I am your host, Minister Rudy Roussel. This telecast today is from Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple at 1150 West Galbraith Road, where my pastor is the Honorable Bishop Paul Alexander Bowes. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus, because it is a name that we love. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for your grace, for your mercy, for your love and kindness. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us this opportunity to come before your presence. We pray, Lord, that you let all flesh be silent and that things that are done or said here today will be to encourage those who are lost, to encourage them to come out of darkness and be added to your perfect and to your marvelous light. Have your way in the program, Lord. Touch your heart, touch your soul, so that men, Lord, would know what it takes that they might be saved. Lord, we're thanking you in advance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we'd like to welcome you. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And for a few moments today, we're going to talk to you about a few words from the, from the word of the Lord. Uh, today, um, the world, situations, government, on every hand, things are reaching proportions where turmoil exists. And in the latter days, the Lord himself has said that there will be devastations, wars and rumors of wars. We won't know one season from the next. Now today, this message is not a message of, of fire and brimstone or uh, preaching about uh, hell, destruction, and damnation. But certainly, we must realize that these things do exist even as we speak. We're living in a country today where it's no longer feasible or appropriate to call on the name of the Lord. We focus more today on a higher power. We, we, we focus on things that are greater than ourselves. We're, we're, we're spending a lot of time trying to amass great fortunes and to do things and to promote notoriety and fame and fortune. But today I have you to know I want you to hear me and hear me well. Our most important concern today is the salvation and deliverance of souls. This is our great commission. This is the thing that Jesus told us what we must do. He said that we should go out and preach the gospel to every creature. We, we have the gospel bouncing off satellites. It's on radio, television, in the newspaper. We pass out tracts. We witness the Lord is soon to come. By virtue of the fact of the things that are going on today in this world, most recently the tsunami, most recently the, the devastation that has wreaked, the, uh, wreaked havoc upon the Gulf, Gulf Coast in Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and especially my home state, Louisiana. People are displaced. Havoc is running among the people. There is a way, there is an answer to every solution, to every problem that may exist in this world today. All you have to do is look to Jesus. The Bible says that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And while we're talking about the subject, please remember these people in your prayers today. No matter how much devastation exists in the South, no matter what they're trying to do, no matter how much the government intervenes, it is going to take the hand of the Lord to deliver those people and get them where they need to be, not only in the natural sense, but in the spiritual sense. I have to believe in my heart today that this is not something that happened for nothing. The Lord has a purpose and he has a reasoning. Perhaps folks will be saved, perhaps lives will be spared. And I'm not speaking in the natural sense, I'm speaking according to the word of the Lord and in the spiritual sense. Today, I'm going to read a few words of the Lord from John chapter 14. And those of you that have your Bible available, read along with me. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Part of verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? And the thought of this brief message today is taken, in the first, in, in, taken out of the first verse. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And the thought this morning is to them that believe. The power in the presence of God has always been evidenced in the lives of people that believe in God. Unfortunately, today, we, like in old times, we have a God for everything. There's almost 13,000, 1,300 known religions today. A God for this, a God for that, a culture that does this, a culture that does that. Everybody knows that there's some sort of supreme being. Everybody knows that there's someone greater than we ourselves. But we have come to realize some of us that believe that the source of our strength and our power is in Christ Jesus. Here he's in this chapter, he's telling Philip, he said, have I not been with you so long, Philip, that you don't know who I am? All this time, everything that we've done today, everything that transpires in our life, something about our mere existence should help us to realize that the very presence and the power of God is with us. The Bible tells us that, that, that God suffers no man to be lost. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish and have everlasting life. But that is to those that believe. Jesus said himself, he said, I come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. But that is to them that believe. Some people believe in Buddha and Muhammad and Confucius. Some people believe in Allah. I believe in the true and the one and only living God. The scripture in Deuteronomy say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. We know him today in this dispensation of grace. We know his name to be Jesus. The Bible encourages us in the first chapter of Matthew. It said, when he was talking to Mary, he said, You will be with child, and his name shall be called Jesus. He will save his people. Isaiah 30, 40, third chapter the scriptures encourages us that I, even I, am he, and there's no savior but me. So it's safe to assume, it's reasonable to assume, that if there was one savior in the Old Testament, and in the book of Matthew they introduce Jesus as the savior, it is reasonably safe, according to scripture, to assume that Jesus is the savior of the world. Out of all of the situations that exist today, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh to the Father except by me. He knew what it take to institute a plan of salvation. While others are concentrating on Allah, Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius, Krishna, and all these other people, if you go to their particular grave sites, It'll tell you, those graves are full of dead men's bones. But the Bible tells us that when they rolled back the sepulcher where Jesus was laid, the angel of the Lord looked upon them and he said, Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? We serve a God who's alive and a well today, who's able to do what he can and what he says he will do in his word. 
to them that believe. The Bible says that we should trust in the Lord with all our heart, that we should not lean to our understanding. In all thy ways we should acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. The problem today is, the problem that really exists is that we try to orchestrate our own destination. We try to do those things that we feel that are right for us to sustain a livelihood. But if we trust, put our help and our strength and our trust in the hand of the Lord, he can show us how to do it. The path that he has chosen for us is the way we ought to go. After all, the Bible said that he is the one that suffered and died, that we might have life. The Bible said that by the shedding of his blood, there was no remission for sins. It is not so much how you come into the world, but it's how you go out. Blessed are they that die in Christ. Those of us that have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, those of us who have taken upon the name of Christ, there's salvation for us. This is the plan of salvation that God has devised for them that believe. I'm encouraging you today, no matter what situation that you're in, no matter what trouble that you might be involved in, the scriptures that we have clearly read have said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. If you would turn your cares, cast your cares upon the Lord, we will find that the problems that we're involved in are not so big after all because we serve a great and a big God. He can do all things. The Bible says that there's nothing too hard for God, that he's not a man that he should lie. If he said he can do it in his word, it can be done. The problem is, in every situation, we try to help God help us out of the situation. That is why we fall into so much trouble. That is why sometimes circumstances are more devastating than they should be. It's because we're not trusting in the everlasting Lord. We're not leaning on the everlasting Lord. All we need to do is trust in God. That's all the scriptures require us to do. To obey, to obedient, and do the things that the Lord would have us to do. And eternal life is ours for the asking. To them that believe. Now certainly if you don't believe in the gospel according to Jesus Christ, if you do not believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord, if you do not believe in heaven or in hell, please, I encourage you today, while blood is yet running warm in your vein, to realize that hell one day is going to become a reality for some people. But you don't have to go if you believe. The Bible tells us about having faith. Faith and trust promote belief. God has never failed. I know in my life I have failed God miserably. I have done things that I should not have done. I've been places that I should not have been. But once I was covered up under the blood of Jesus, once my heart was of a repentant nature, once I was baptized into his name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, those things are past. Now I still have problems. I still have situations that I must endure. I still have things that I might go through, some stuff. But I would rather go through those things in the body of Christ than to be outside the realms of salvation trying to handle those situations myself. God, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy on those of us, Lord, who are sometimes stiff-necked, sometimes disobedient, Lord. We, we understand that the things of God sometimes are difficult, but if you believe, you don't worry about logic. You don't worry about reason. You don't worry about how God is going to do it. You're going to believe in your heart that it just can be done because it says God is the one who is going to do it. So for them that believe. Now, if you're walking around, if you're living in, a, in an area of disbelief or little faith, that is where God is going to meet you. If you have a little faith, you'll see a little of God. If you have a little belief, then the things you request of God, they're going to be in a small amount. But for those of us that know the Lord in the fullness of his power and might, we expect great things from God. We expect great deliverance from our tests, from our trials, from our troubles, from our situations. Because with all of our heart, with all of our strength, with all of our might, we believe that God is able to do the things that he says he can do and will do in his word. 
to them that believe. There are those of us who try to work things out that we have a backup plan where God is concerned. There are many people today that look at the Bible and they're in awe and wondering how God did some of the things he said he could do in his word. How could he wall up the walls of the Red Sea and let people walk through on dry land? I heard a story on television where they were trying to analyze how God was able to do that. They said this particular longitude or the altitude or all these stratospheric problems, all these uh, uh, different explanations that they had to determine how they could walk through water on dry land as, as the water parted. They were trying to say that the Red Sea at that particular time of the year usually was very shallow. They tried to explain that by this longitude and this latitude that perhaps the way the earth was turning on its axis that perhaps it caused this phenomenon as they said to occur. Dear saints of God and all of you that are viewing this telegast, you take it from me that God defies logic he defies reason, he defies explanation, he does things solely because he can and because he is God. You need to take him at his word. You need to believe what the Lord says that he's able to do for you. You should believe in your heart that everlasting life is our promise for those of us that believe. A lot of times we're in situation where our faith wavers. All you have to do is say, Lord, Increase my faith. If your faith is increased and the evidence of the things that the Lord said will happen, can will happen, will happen in your life, you'll come to the point where without a question of a doubt that you believe, that you trust in God, you'll come to a point in your life where no matter what happens, come heck or high water, you'll know that it's God there who is able to protect you. You'll know that I serve an awesome God and he can deliver me from any situation. You'll serve a God who can provide all of your needs. You'll serve a master who's greater than any other. All you have to do to them that believe is to worship and serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The Lord himself said, be ye holy because I'm holy. The scripture says, without holiness, no man will see God. After all, there's nothing we can give God. There's nothing we can do for God other than give him the holiness that the Holy Ghost imputes in us. After all, God owns everything else. He created everything else. Everything that we know that exists is by the handiwork of God. We know that. Those of us that believe. And without this belief in our heart, we're lost. Believe me, to be absent from the presence of the Lord is to be lost. All across this great land, the most powerful country in the world, yet we do not realize that if we've taken prayer out of the schools, we've taken the Ten Commandments out of the courts, they're trying to take Bibles out of the workplace, they're trying to do things that designed to discredit the kingdom and the power of the everlasting God. But if you remove the Bible from the courtroom, remove the Ten Commandments, remove prayer, all you have left is hell. And God can let you have a little taste of hell right here on earth to them that don't believe. I don't think that we should be socially and politi politically correct to do anything that is going to compromise our salvation and devotion to the Lord God. Whatever we have to go through, whatever we have to endure, believe me, when we come out on the other side, it's going to be worth it. The Bible says we're going to be, he, that we should be persecuted for his name's sake. Certainly we're not persecuted like the saints of old, but nevertheless the things that we have to endure today, it is still persecution. Popularity, you're not going to be quite popular if you're preaching the truth. People don't always want to hear the truth, except those that believe. The Bible encourages us that in the latter days, there'll be a great pouring out. That same spirit, that same presence, that same power of the, 
of, of, of God that was poured out in the upper room is being poured out today. But in spite of these things, the scriptures also encourages us to believe that there will be a great turning away. And it is not turning away from God. They're building churches on every corner, mega churches, able to see 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people. Some services, there are two and three of them in one facility, in one church per day because people are coming in droves. The turning away comes from the turning away from the truth of the gospel according to Jesus Christ. They have so many other plans of salvation devised. They're offering people a watered down version of salvation. You have some people that have received the right hand fellowship of membership in churches and they're now card carrying church members who don't have a clue of God, about God's plan of salvation. But I declare to you today that there is only one way to be saved. The Bible said that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every incident in the book of Acts that records the acts of the apostles, they tell us incident after incident, occurrence after occurrence. First in Jerusalem that they repented. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost. In the book of Acts chapter 8, it tells you how the Samaritan, how the Holy Ghost and the baptism in the name of the Lord was instituted. It tells you that those that believed were baptized in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 11, Acts chapter 19, the same thing. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And like some of us today, they said we've not even heard of the Holy Ghost. We were baptized under John's baptism, the baptism of repentance. Even John himself said, repent, the day of the Lord is at hand. He also let them know, he said, they come one after me who will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. John was setting the stage for Jesus to come, to teach the gospel, to set precedence on how we are supposed to live. I want you to know today that in the church of the Almighty God, that that is the way it is supposed to be. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And that is the plan of salvation that God had instituted for us. All we need to do is just get on board. Get on the bandwagon. Forget about all of these fly-by-night salvations. Forget about all these other plans that are sending us in the direction that the Lord will not have us to go. We need to forget about all of these things that do not promote salvation. Paul said, in him we live and we move and we have our being. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Lord, there's only one way that the Lord had encouraged us to be saved. In the Old Testament, the ark, Noah's ark, is a, is a type of Christ-like symbolism. One way in, and that's the same with Jesus. There's only one way into the realm of salvation. The Bible says that Noah and eight members of his family were sailed, and the Lord himself shut the door. Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, the light. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. And these eight people were saved. Salvation was granted to Noah and his family. Just by the death of Christ, salvation was granted to us, to them that believe. I want to encourage everybody today. Seek the Lord where he may, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The spirit and the presence of God will not strive with men always. The Bible said that we should study, study to show thyself approved unto God. Where workmen need not be ashamed. Rightfully dividing the word of truth. So in the last and final days after the final consummation of all fulfillment and fulfillment of all scripture. When we stand before the great and mighty God at the white throne judgment. The Bible says in Revelation that the book and the books were open. And of course we know one to be the Lamb's book of life. But when you stand in the power and the presence of God and he says to you, he said, my child, why didn't you do this? Why wasn't your lifestyle being lived the way I had it planned? Well, Lord, I did not know. You're going to be without excuse, and that shame is going to come in 
When the Lord tells you, he said, I gave you 66 books. You should have read them and you should have gotten it right. God had this plan of salvation sold up here today. All you need to do is pray. Seek the Lord with all favor, with all your might, with all your power. And the Lord will hear your cry just like he did to the children of Israel. He said, that's my child. I hear that. 430 years they suffered. You don't have to suffer anymore. Just call upon the name of the Lord. And he'll deliver you from your situation. There's nothing too hard for God. May the Lord bless you today. May the Lord keep you. Again, I would like to encourage you to please visit us, Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple at 1150 West Galbraith Road. Our phone number is 522-1150, and our pastor is Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers. Uh, Sunday school is at 945 on Sunday. Uh, service is at 1115. We also have a night service which begins promptly at 7 o'clock. During the week, we have Monday night service, uh, which is a Holy Ghost receiving service. Wednesday night, we have adult Bible class and youth young, and young adult uh, Bible study in our Covell Chapel. We're looking forward to seeing you. We, our prayer for you this week is that the Lord touch you, that the Lord help you, that the Lord keeps you from all hurt, harm, or damage. God bless you. May God keep you. In Jesus' name.